Time now for the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network with your host, Kevin Arnold and Always Positive Jay. I think the Browns may have found themselves a kicker. And it's week one and the Browns are 1-0, and not 0-1. Let's go, guys. <laughs> it is the first edition of the 2022 Browns postgame show. Jay. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm going nuts, baby. This is, finally, we won one. There it I is. was smart enough to step away from the mic this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do not blow out people's eardrums, yeah. but I don't think anybody's going to care because the adrenaline is running through everybody after that epic finish. Down oh, in Carolina this yeah, like afternoon. 58 yards of excitement in me right now. I 58 feel like. yards of excitement. That's right. And this is the Voice of the Land, your official Browns post game show. Well, I guess unofficial. We kind of took that title. I said it two years ago. And it nah, it's official. We're taking it. It's ours. Yeah, Dave, it's ours. No hey, one's told us no. Possession nine tenths of the law. Yes, got a point. Don't argue with the audio. Dave never told us no, so we're <laughs> rolling with it. So we are the official Browns post game show right here on the Big Play Network. I'm Kevin Arnold. He is always positive. Jay, that is audio or Peter Tellup behind the proverbial glass this evening. We are all celebrating a Browns victory. We'll get into that in just a little bit. We'll also be joined by Chris McNeil, better known as well Reflog. On Twitter, that's the uh, that's the guy McNeil. If people just know him by one name, and if you're known by one name, you, you're, you're doing, doing something it. right. You're doing something right. So we will talk to him about 7:30 tonight. So we'll get our reactions in, get his reaction, and you know we do still talk other sports. Baseball team went five and one on the road trip. Did what they needed to do. Swept so, the Twins, man. So like we were on a little downfall there. Yep. But when you come back and you sweep the Twins in this division race, Warren. I'm good. I'm good with that. Just keep winning. Just keep beating our division, guys. Finish strong. Keep beating the division, that's for sure. And I know that they, the team that's now behind them is the Chicago White Sox. And right now, the team that they get to face more often that's behind them is the Twins. We're going to need some games against the White Sox and see how we match up because we need to keep pushing both of those teams backwards each time that we play them. But we'll talk about that a little later on as well. But we got to react to the Browns game. We are brought to you tonight. By Vector Technical, they'll get the right person and the right job the first time. And, of course, partnered with LPV Productions, plus sporting some of that voice land gear each week. If you are just tuning into the audio on Google, Spotify, or Apple, I am wearing our voice of land cap. Make sure you head on over to voiceofland.com forward slash shop to get yours, Peter, or audio. People were looking for those mugs that you gifted yeah. Jay and I with the city skyline. Do you think that's something we could get on the shop? We'll get that up there. All yeah, right. it's yeah. been... Things have been a little crazy, as you know, with uh, everything going on, especially with uh, high school football season starting as well. Yeah, high it's, school football season. It's crazy that we're almost halfway through the the high school football season at this point. We are ha- approaching the halfway point. Yeah, we are. Well, this coming of, Friday wow. of the regular season, but uh, I'm sure we'll be tasked to do probably up to the regional finals again this year. So. Well, it was great to be back out with CBC TV this past week. Um, unfortunately, I am out this coming week. Just going to oh. tell you on air. <laughs> okay, uh, well. <laughs> uh, I am I'm in Medina, uh, Medina Strongsville. I'm going to be covering that game this this uh, this Friday night. So right. looking forward to that I'm one. We have then, to go out there and check that one out. Yeah, I, I think Medina had a pretty good game. And, and you know, any anytime you get some of those Division One, Region One schools, I believe both of them are in unless Strongsville has been moved down or one of them has been moved down. But Division One, Region One, like that's that's the pinnacle of high school football here, and uh, you know, really looking forward to that one. But before we really get into Browns football and, and talking about Cade York, and I'm going to talk about Cade York a lot because I'm the soccer guy on this on this uh, show. And I support you. I'm not the soccer guy, but I support you. And he's he's the one that mentioned that he had played soccer before. So if you mentioned that, all you had me at soccer. Just like they used to, just like people say, you had me at hello. You had me at soccer, Cade. That's all you needed. All I need now is a number three jersey, and I'm good to go with this team. Before we do that, today is a day that we should not forget what it symbolizes as well, though. And we usually do our uh, well wishes, our prayers, our uh, things like that when things kind of hit us in, in life to make sure people realize that real life still happens. But today, I think from all of us, um, continued prayers to those affected, those who lost loved ones on 9-11, 2021, you know, uh, 21 years now. 
but you never forget. And I know that that's the hashtag every single year, and that's like a trendy thing on social media, but those two words are very powerful. Never forget, and that's something we can never forget. Um, you know, what our nation went through that day, I know that none of us will ever forget where we were. I mean, I don't think anyone in this nation, if you ask anyone that has any memory of that, they can tell you exactly what they were doing that exact moment, where they exactly where they were. It was just one of the most heartbreaking moments I've ever seen in my entire life, if not the most heartbreaking moment I've ever seen. Yeah, and I know that there were special remembrances around the NFL um, being being the opening. Yes, the season opened on Thursday night, which was great, but uh, and Buffalo kind of didn't dispel any – uh, any of the predictions that people have with the Bills being a uh, Super Bowl favorite this year, they definitely took care of business over in L.A. But uh, really that, that first Sunday when, you know, NFL Red Zone is on, you got a bunch of games, and boy, was it crazy at the end of the morning, the uh, early afternoon window of NFL Red Zone with all those games. We'll talk about that too. But uh, the NFL definitely uh, remembering today, and I know a lot of people are, so – we would be remiss if we didn't mention that at the start of the show. Not to kind of bring down the, the mood. I just think it's important that that gets mentioned and not actually forgotten. If you hashtagged it today, don't just use it as a hashtag. You know, make sure that you truly live by those words. Never forget. And uh, that, was a, that was a powerful time in this country and, and how we all came together. And So maybe we should do a little, like, remember how we all came together like that. Like, yeah. That's what we need a lot of this, a lot more in this country right now. Uh, you know, they talk about silver linings, and, you know, that's one of the – never want to go through anything like that anywhere even close again, but that was a silver lining, and I think that that's a message that could be out there in the world, and I, I think that uh, togetherness is something that Cleveland kind of embodies. It's not, it's, this isn't an easy transition, but I, I think Cleveland embodies that togetherness that, we, that we're looking for. And the one thing that brings everybody together – the Cleveland Browns. Jay's got his Nick Chubb jersey on. Nick Chubb definitely representing this afternoon. The run game. I mean, Stefanski sticking to it all game long in that offensive mm. line. And not, I guess, not all game long. There's but sometimes at the end of that game, I feel like you got a little cute there with the pass. But yeah, so though th- that left a little be a little to be desired. But implementing Chubb and Hunt the way we've kind of wanted to see both and a lot on the more field, than we have in the past. A lot more, and yeah, they're putting it on film, but. People got to stop it. And if there's there's probably other looks from those formations that they had. I, as soon as I saw before the first touchdown, Nick Chubb's in the backfield. But who do I see? A fullback? Kareem Hunt. I'm thinking, are they really going to throw on first down when you got Nick Chubb running? Oh, wait, that's Kareem Hunt. So this might work. You get him out of the backfield, wide open, just falls down in the end zone, touchdown. Now you're... Now you take the lead after the offense looked abysmal up to that point. It's to be expected to a certain extent because the starters didn't really play in yeah. uh, in in the preseason. Do, do you think that played anything into the, the oh, start totally. of this game? I mean, then they're still gelling together. Like they're all this is their first year together. Like last year, our defense, how what it looked like at the beginning, like we had to gel, like we were still learning things. And as the season went on, the defense figured out how to work with each other. They figured out their schemes, and they were a hell of a lot better. And I expect the same from the offense. Do I think it's going to become prolific? No, but I think it'll be good enough to get the W with the defense playing the way it should be playing. I'd like to see them finish games a little stronger than they did today, but they still played really good for most of that game today. They did play They did play really well, and, um, you know, the, of course, the there was the underlying storyline, the main storyline of why this game was, you know, meant a lot more to people watching that didn't have a rooting interest in it because of the guy that was on the other side now playing quarterback. This show is not going to get that much into Baker Mayfield and, and the back and forth. The Browns beat the Panthers today. They yes. didn't beat Baker Mayfield. They right. beat the Panthers. The Browns beat the Panthers. The Browns allowed the Panthers to get back into it, and Baker definitely played a role in that. But... The Browns found a way to win, and you knew that that was how this was going to have to be. When you haven't won an opener in 17 years, and I think they said on the broadcast that they haven't won on the road in an opener since Since 1994. Yeah. Like, you knew it wasn't going to be as easy as it looked. It looked real easy, like they were in control, even though only up two scores. 
it looked real easy, didn't it, Jay? I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I started feeling pretty good there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. and then that long bomb to Anderson, I was like, you got to be kidding me right now. Like, this isn't going to happen. Like, this can't happen. Like, I can't lose another opener. I'm sick of losing another opener. And the way they ended, the way they ended that, I just can't believe it. Like, to be put into that spot for a rookie to hit 58 yards on the road to win a game in your first time ever, and you nailed it. Didn't even, like, come close to missing it. Probably would have made it from 65. Unbelievable, dude. Oh, yeah, he hit a ton on that. I, I mean, the way that it hit the back net and, yeah. you know, with the power on it and pushing. He's going to rip that net one of these games, I bet. <laughs> right. You see a lot of these long field goals where they drip over mm -hmm. the crossbar or, you know, they still had maybe a yard or two more, but it lands on the ground and barely, it doesn't even hit the net. That one hit the net and pushed it back as if he was right. It yeah. was like a chip shot That looked goal. like it hit the net, you know, about halfway up, too. I mean, it, he had a lot of leg in that. And I'm just so thrilled that we are not on the receiving end of a, you know, being beaten by a right. game-winning field goal of, you know, We got our own version yards, yeah. of Justin Mother Tucker. Finally. They're going to be screaming about this dude for years to come. Like, to hit his first one like that, that's going to boost his confidence even more than he already had. Like, it's all downhill from Hill from right now, I feel like. And, guys, I heard that in warm-ups, he was... Squibbing you know, them. He was, he was pushing them left and right. He, and was he was six for seven from 50, they said, in warm-ups. Yeah, like six Stefanski, or seven the wrong way. Yeah, like uh, bad. 50-yard field goal. So and Stefanski, like, earlier I was mad because they didn't let the kid go out there and kick a long field goal, not that realizing a, that he did this. Right. And he said he wanted to make sure he saw it go through those uprights before he put him into a long kicking position. And hats off to you, Stefanski. That was great coaching right there. That's why they don't, they should not listen to us. Maybe, yeah. som maybe sometimes they should. I mean, um, they should listen to The Voice of the Land because we're a great yeah. show. Yes. But that's not necessarily like take our advice. <laughs> like, because in that moment that you're talking about where they, they you know, they, they we felt like they were in Cade York range mm -hmm. and they ended up going for it and they didn't get it. We're like, why aren't you taking the points? Like, we feel like, didn't we draft a guy? That's what I even tweeted. I'm like, why did you draft a guy with the leg if you ain't going to use him? Right. But I, and I, thought, I thought that, but then you, you get all the way to the end. You allow the entire game to play out. Look, we thought the, even though we know we're from Cleveland and there's, we can't ever be safe. You, you almost kind of got that false sense of security with the way the, the game was going and the scoreline and be and controlling this game. Then all of a sudden, the old like the old Cleveland element came back. So it was going to come down to this: a field goal or last play to win a game to get that 17 opening game losing streak off your back, to get the road opener losing streak off your back. And you know how contagious. Not to go back to some, but I to, that Jarvis Landry used to say, but still pun intended. You know how contagious one and always in the NFL like. How much energy, Jay? You were playing in the uh, over there while you were watching Kansas City ripping on Arizona. You were playing the video from inside the locker. Yeah. The Browns always do a great job of getting that yeah. content, but the 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 vibe in that locker room that's so important after game one. That's something they haven't had in a long time. One and oh, you get the feeling of I want more of this right from the start, and you've seen that propel teams that maybe had question marks. Coming into each season. I mean, you got a huge monkey off your back winning this, winning an opener. That's huge. Like, I don't know if the players necessarily felt that kind of stuff, but as mm. fans, we we definitely feel it. Like, I felt it at the end of that game. Like, here we go again. Oh, no. I can't lose an opener, and we didn't. That's awesome. You got the Jets next week. And the Jets, sorry, but, I mean, they're garbage. You could go. You could start 2-0. and oh. Do you know how amazing that is? Like, that's huge. To keep that momentum, you got to keep it going and keep it going one week mm -hmm. at a time, as they say. But we got a great chance to start off this season on the right start. Yeah, and you got you have basically within five days of each other, you got back to back home games. And yes, I know that Pitts puke won today. It was almost like Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh didn't want to win. They were like, "Here, you the loudest take it. doink ever." Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Holy moly! I, I don't know if it was the TV or I heard it from my house, but oh man, that was a loud doink. That was loud. It was it was insane. Was I, was, I couldn't boom. believe how loud that was. Like overall, the, the crowd noise, and everything else, 
<laughs> that thing just reverberated through that stadium. Jana was laying on the couch while we were watching the, like the end of all these games at the apartment, and she hears that, but like, she was looking down at her phone, and like I'm watching this, and I see it, and I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> and she's like, oh, wait, what was that? Uh, she, did something happen outside? <laughs> It's like no, the dude just like clanged it, it off the. It sounded like, like a bird flying into like a glass door or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Like, even though Pittsburgh lost, and we don't on this show, we don't ever wish injury on anybody. Well, they won, but they I mean, did, yeah, they won. They do. Sorry. They did lose their main pass. They, you though. lost, um, Najee Harris too. Yeah, and T.J. Watt. Yeah. So they're they're gonna struggle. Like they're they're not gonna do well with those are their two best players on offense and defense. So it's like all right. I can handle them winning a game. You know Cincinnati is going to bounce back mm-hmm. from what they did. Like, Joe Burrow's not going to throw, what, three or four interceptions four, today? Four, four interceptions, yeah. two fumbles. Like, he was a turnover machine. Yeah. That ain't going to happen again. They're going to bounce back, and they're going to put points on the board. So, I'm kind of glad they got off to a bad start because I think Pittsburgh's going to fall off. Yeah. This show, we will make sure to shed light on what when our rivals lose. If you want this show to be something where we're going to – show any sign of rooting for players to be heard or no. not playing that is this is not the show for you so you know we respect we are respecting of you if you decide to bow out of viewing this or listening to this show right now that is not who we're going to be we're not going to root for the demise i mean of- we will applaud early retirement for pittsburgh Steelers that aren't injured they just wanted to like call quits it's okay Go ahead. We applaud you for quitting. We will <laughs> we will shed light and spotlight and applaud and uh, clamor when our rivals suffer demise within the win loss column of the newspaper, not when they not on the injury report. That is not what this show is ever gonna be. But what this show is gonna do is gonna take a break. And on the other side, we're gonna break down this game just a little bit more, kind of get into a couple performances, maybe I guess give out game balls per se. Who was who was our players of the game? Maybe unsung heroes. We'll talk about that on the other side. This is the Voice of Land on the Big Play Network. Whether you're looking to hire new talent or start a new career, Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has helped thousands of job seekers advance in their career with reputable partners throughout Northeastern Ohio. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. With an above average hire in rate of one in four candidates, Vector works hard to connect the right person with the right opportunity the first time. Vector Technical hires for skilled manufacturing and light industrial work and is sure to have a career that you've been looking for. To learn more, visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com. Welcome back to your Browns post-game show on the Big Play Network. This is the voice of the land. Kevin Arnold, always positive, Jay. And what Jarvis was to Iron Man Audio, our producer extraordinaire, is to the voice of the land. You won't see him, but you will hear him from time to time. Does he actually exist? We don't know. We're still working to figure that out. At some point, a camera will turn on to the actual humanoid version of audio. But that won't be today because we're too busy celebrating Cade York. Us, the savior, the Browns go 1-0. Victory Sunday night. Victory Sunday night. You get a victory Monday. Thank you so much, Cade York. Thank you, Browns, for being 1-0 for the first time in 17 years to start a season. That's how you kick off a season, unintended. Absolutely. And you know what's great about being 1-0? It's a, there's another chance to go 2-0 <laughs> next week. Um, I like being perfect. Perfect is... A very difficult thing to attain, yes. but would be very, very nice if, if it was a lot I'll easier. enjoy it for a week. Absolutely. Now, what we are going to enjoy probably for a week is going to be, and the atmosphere that's going to be downtown in sun, on Sunday is going to be, it doesn't matter what the weather is going to be. We've seen the atmosphere after going 0-1. It's supposed to be 80 and nice. 80 and nice. I saw maybe a chance of showers. We don't know. Like, that. it's the weather in Northeast Ohio. I'm not even I really worried. hope so because i got to do all our filming for uh, – our tail's a tailgate. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's and true. I really yeah. don't want to walk in rain. I mean, I'm going to be walking the city with you, but I won't. Like, I'll be working. So, yeah. you know, I, I got a lot of walking to do, apparently, this year. And I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to it because we're got, coming from a different spot. I will be on assignment. Ooh, on dun, assignment. Dun, dun. Yeah, I, I guess we should tell people right now, while we are the Browns postgame show and we should be here every week, family might 
family always comes first, and that, uh, that philosophy might need to be enacted from the Voice of the Land next week. So stay tuned to our Twitter, at BTL underscore pod, at Voice of the Land on Facebook, and uh, Voice of the Land podcast on YouTube. I think it's at VTL underscore pod on Instagram, yep. too, but I barely use Instagram. <laughs> so. I, I would say at this point, we'll be here next week. Okay. That, that's, that's the plan. Okay. So. That 1-0 and got you guys feeling good. And well, yeah. We just... As long as uh, Audio Junior over there gets uh, gets his homework done before all the events okay. uh, next weekend, we'll, gotcha. we'll be good. Gotcha. So, um, Got to keep Mrs. Audio happy. Yes. So not guaranteed right now. Of course, plan to have a show, but stay tuned. But, again, what we're going to be celebrating up to next week and why the energy in the city is going to be great. When we've seen it 0-1 and the first home game coming home with anticipation about what the team looks like, Imagine this city now that the team is 1-0 after their first road game, their first game of the year, now coming home for their home opener. You know how crazy it is in the Muni oh, lot and everything. Nuts. It's going Kevin, to be nuts. They were, we were happy when we lost a close game to Kansas City because we just put up a bunch of points and we were like, yeah. just looked so competitive and it was such a great game. We lost. Like, oh, you know, we lost, but it was a moral victory, which kind of may have felt mm. like one, but in hindsight it wasn't. But moral that's another victory. Yeah, but – Something now that we actually have a dub, like, oh, this thing is going to be nuts. I can't wait to cover some of these tailgates. I'm so excited. It sounds like an SNL skit. I, I'm, I think they did, like, a deep thought thing or something like that with that kind of intro to it. Deep thoughts. Oh, or... with, J- with Jack Handy. Yeah. 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 Moral yeah. victory. Moral victories with the four. Or you could say it like Mortal Kombat, like, moral victory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, because you probably have to do that to get through it. <laughs> um but, I mean, so looking out there on the field, your assessment, though, of, of Jacoby Brissett, I know it was first game out there, it did not look good, and everybody's going to react to every single play that's going to, you know, the, the Twitter warriors are going to be out there for every single play, every single throw. doesn't matter who the quarterback is, what the offense looks like. If people have question marks about them, the question, until they're answered, the question marks are going to continue to be the, uh, the focal point. I would say. And if anybody has any thoughts, you guys can tune in. Uh, make sure you put your comments in the live stream that you're watching on. We'll try to get those on the air as well. Trying to get more interactive with the show moving forward. We're still working on it. Stay with us, everyone. Jay, your assessment of Jacoby today. He was exactly what I thought he was going to be. A C-plus kind of quarterback, maybe C to C quarterback. He Did he miss some wide-open guys early, which oh. I think he'll get better at once they get more in tune with each other yeah of course he did like he left definitely left points on there but at the end when you had to make a play he made plays and that's all we need from him yeah you need him to manage a game no turnovers do your job and just put that game in just got to get it in reach because this defense is going to do really good this year and just rely on that running game man yeah peter i mean jacoby Brissett. we we knew it wasn't going to look great in the We've kind of talked about our question marks about the wide receiver room, some un- unsung heroes there, but Jacoby doing just enough today and got them to the spot they needed to. We all knew that Cade York had a leg. Jacoby and this team has seen it at training camp and in practice doing what he needed to do today, I think would be the, the way to say it. Yeah, I mean, I would have uh, – I thought he performed worse than I expected. Okay. Um, I think there was a lot more – I don't know, maybe felt like rust on him. And the the thing is, like, we went to training camp. You know, we were able to to do that, and we saw some of the practices. And um, But in the preseason games, he didn't really play that much. We didn't have the starter, you know. You know, Cooper wasn't in the preseason game. So it was – it was really like I didn't know what to expect. I, I expected a little bit better game management from him, but all in all, I mean, he did what needed to be done. Um, I mean, if, if I'm going to find fault with the team, my fault's not going to lie mainly on Brissett. Right. It's like today we saw, I wouldn't say his worst game, but like the bottom barrel of his good game. Like yeah. he could play a lot better than this. Like definitely will have better games. This, But this is like for a win – that he doesn't throw a whole bunch of turnovers. This is like the bottom of the barrel. What you're going to well, get from? Well, how many turnovers did we have today? I don't think we had any. Exactly. Right. So keeping keeping the ball and winning the turnover battle is what that's one of the little things that leads to victory in the NFL. We we won by two points, but it still counts as a win and a win and a win in the win column. 
you gotta you gotta win with those two or three plays that determine a lot of these games. And we saw at the end of that uh, mid afternoon window, a lot of these games were determined by one or two plays, just like you're gonna see every single week in the NFL. It almost was against us. Almost. That long touchdown was almost the one that did us in. And I think Peter brings up a point where he's kind of indicating he did see fault today, and we are a realistic show as much as we are excited and happy that the Browns won. We don't get a chance to talk all week. You know, there's going to be plenty of shows they get to talk every single day that, you know, today they can only fo- they can just focus on the win tomorrow. They can just focus on the win. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, you switch gears to talking about the Jets and what needs to improve. We don't get that luxury. So, Jay, where did you see the fault today? Or where did you see the co- I mean, the defense had a couple blown coverages. I think John Johnson was supposed to t- pick up the wide wide receiver. And he just didn't. He went under the underneath route, and the guy, like I said, just poof, gone wide open. Mm-hmm. But I guess it's week one. There's going to be all kinds of mistakes all over yeah. the place. And the best part is like making mistakes in a win. You get to like as a coach, you get to let them enjoy it, right? But you get to humble them at the same time when you want yeah. you go watching all that film. Like, oh, don't get a don't get ahead of yourselves, boys, because you may have won. But you didn't win a perfect game, right? And that's great. Like a coach almost got to love that. Yeah, and we saw we saw at points how good this secondary can be and how how deep it is. And now Martin Emerson coming into that room, he had like one penalty against him, but you hadn't heard his name up to that point. I didn't really hear his name after. That's kind of a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Denzel Ward. You know, people aren't going to target him too much out there. So, I mean, that's just I'm calling it the Lonely Island now. Right. No one wants to go there. <laughs> no. No. And, uh, you know, we also saw from the defensive front, we saw Clowney and Garrett making those plays. I think the next step in that evolution, like you said, cleaning up the miscommunication Mm -hmm. on the back end, but also those guys. And if Miles Garrett wants to be the guy, if he really feels disrespected about being the 11th ranked player in the NFL in that top 100, whatever Madden, I know he got 99, but if he gets disrespected by a Madden rating or you know, not being considered even a, uh, a candidate for defensive player of the year. It's got to be that last drive by the Panthers where they got their field goal. I know we stopped them with the eight seconds, but you better stop a team when, when they're backed up and you got eight seconds like that. And they kind of, they're not really knowing how to operate in that situation, but the drive before that, where they got the field goal to take the lead and you felt like, Oh no, is this happening, happening to us again? You want to see, those guys and the guy step up in those situations. I'm not saying anything against Miles or, or or anything like that. What I'm saying is Aaron Donald made the play to finish off the Super Bowl. We feel like we have that guy on our side of Miles Garrett. Now if we now we got to see that in a drive like that where a team has a chance to come back on you, shut the door, finish it off, don't even get back to your offense where they have to go and then go kick a 58-yard field goal. I'll take it. I love Cade York, but you want to shut the door sometimes too. I mean, yeah, totally. Again, <laughs> but other than that, I'll let a hell of a game. I mean, yeah. Let, <laughs> let, if, if you're looking at this at this game from just the watcher's point of view and not being a Browns fan or a Panthers fan, like that was one hell of a game, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I have no nails on my fingers because I've chewed them all off because of it. But wow, what a game. Yeah, and as bad as the Panthers started, Matt Rule is definitely on the hot seat to start this season down there in Carolina. Oh, yeah. To see that second half from your team where you're trying to get some pieces to gel together down there, and it's it's much more new. Matt Rule probably has the most talent he has down there in Carolina. You, you like to see that from your team, but if you don't finish, and I think that was what was important in that video in the locker room, Stefanski has these guys – uh, you know, knowing exactly what their key cliches and terms are. He said, we got to play start to, and everybody finished it by saying, finish, start to finish. You got to go start to finish. If you don't finish, it doesn't matter what you did in the beginning. You hey. got to finish the game. They found a way to do that. Instead of giving out game balls, like I know everybody will, like get player of the game and stuff, who would be your unsung hero? Before we bring on uh, Chris McNeil from the Big Play Reflog show and Reflog underscore 18 on Twitter. The guy that everyone cried about that he wasn't making any noise and during the training camp and stuff and preseason game, Donovan Peoples-Jones. You made some hell of contested catches today, man, in big moments, too. Hats off to you, young man. Six receptions for 60 yards, but, like, big, again, big the, the, moments to get first downs. The huge 
catches too. And what I like about it is I actually kind of thought maybe DPJ could start to break out this year because I didn't hear anything about him in the preseason. Yeah. Last couple of years, we heard, oh, my gosh, this DPJ guy is the one that's flashing. He's all over the place in preseason. He's going to have a great year. Um, where is he? Where is he? It doesn't seem like he's there. Except for that game winner against Cincinnati a couple of years back in 2020. Hadn't really seen him. So it, I thought it was kind of a good thing that he was kind of quiet and just letting the work, just putting in the work on the side and, and letting it show today. Peter, do you have an unsung hero from today? Uh, you know, there's, I would say Hudson. Coming in, mm -hmm. you know, good. that's a that was a you don't hear spot. his name. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's just it. And honestly, I think the guys in the trenches because there mm. were really not. I forget. I don't know the the flag total, penalty total we had, but we there were not like a ton of mistakes made on the front line. That's I mean, a McCaffrey good... only thirty three yards. They held him to. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good question too because um, one of the question marks about Stefanski and and these teams is that they have they've been undisciplined and mm -hmm. they've gotten a lot of penalties against them. Just scrolling through uh, ESPN's box score here and just trying to see if they have uh, penalties or anything like that, but I don't see um, penalties. Browns, well, nine for 71. So that was kind of like a quiet nine because for a while there, they had like a, a There was the penalties. one that they said was uh, rough in the passer. Yeah. Which is borderline, but we kind of got the borderline one later. Yeah. Um, the pass interference on Emerson, that's 15 yards. So there's 30 right there just in two penalties. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, but there were, there were games, I think, last year where it's like we were just shooting ourselves in the foot with right. Well, you, you feel like you're driving, you're driving, you're driving, you're yeah. driving, then holding it, drive killer. Right. Yeah. It didn't feel like the penalties were what helped the Panthers get back yeah. in the game. It was, you know, the I mean, Panthers. Coming, us. Yeah. The, the, the Panthers coming back was them taking advantage of miscommunications like you're supposed to do, and that's going to happen when a team's able to come back. Defenses are going to be making mistakes. So they took advantage of that, and our defense making those mistakes. Uh, but not the penalties, I didn't feel like. My unsung hero, before we hit this break, David Njoku. And I know he's taking a lot of flack because he's get, getting a lot of money. And when you see one reception for uh, eight yards, seven yards, the money does not equal that. He only got targeted once. You said it before while we were in break. Can't he, throw it to yourself. Can't throw it to yourself. Now, does now he, if he did, that would be really impressive, though. Is part of that maybe him not running the right routes and, and things like that? And that miscommunication with Brissett because he doesn't have that chemistry with him? Maybe. But I say he's the unsung hero because I saw countless times, and they highlighted it a couple times very specifically, him setting the edge in the run game. And what was a big question about his ability as a tight end was being a blocking tight end. This league has gone away from a blocking tight end because they're more of that extra weapon out there on the field in the passing game. It is a passing league, but he's doing the dirty work. These wide receivers are willing to do the dirty work still. That was a culture that has been established. Shadow Shea has done a great job coaching these receivers up for something like that. So David Njoku gets my unsung hero because the Browns had the most success on the ground. That doesn't happen if Njoku is – getting penalties against them or not setting the edge and allowing guys to take the legs out, of, out from underneath Hunt and Chubb in the backfield today. With that, we are going to hit our second break of the night. If you want some uh, voice land gear, I did tell you we're earlier where to get it. If you missed it and you're just tuning in live right now or on replay, you just skipped ahead for some reason. I don't know why, but in this break, we have a message on where you can find some of your voice land gear with more to come with the mugs that we posted. This is the voice of land on the big play network. Are you struggling to hire the right talent or maybe even find the right career? Vector Technical makes it easy. Since 1992, Vector has provided Ohio employers with a reliable process for hiring and have helped thousands of job seekers advance in their careers. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. We invest time to get to know each client and candidate personally. Vector places people in job opportunities that they are truly excited about. Interested in learning more? Visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com to see a full list of our current job opportunities and to find out what Vector Technical can offer you.
get your gear at voiceoftheland.com forward slash shop. Welcome back to your Browns post game show for the Big Play Network. This is the Voice of the Land. If you're just tuning in, Kevin Arnold alongside always positive Jay and Peter Tellup, better known as Audio, our producer extraordinaire. While we wait for our guest, uh, Chris McNeil, to jump on with us through Zoom here tonight, we've been talking Browns, and Browns are 1 0, boys. 1 0. So awesome. So awesome. It just, it, it, you don't know how to, how to react because we've. They we're back at Riggy Bobby. I don't know what to do with my I, hands I, here. I, I, you know, we're wanting to know what do we do here? It's, it's Let's like, put him down by your side, Jay. You know, back in 2020, we didn't know how to actually be able to react because of the unprecedented times we were in. But Browns made the playoffs, and then they went on the road and they beat the the Steelers. I don't know what to do with my hands. Like this is that type kind of thing. And now we are joined, and maybe he can kind of fill us in on how he's been reacting this entire time. Chris McNeil of the Reflog Show oh, here on the on Big Play, here, me... and uh, as Peter gets him up on the board and uh, bringing him through, getting him set up, Chris, thank you so much for taking some time to join us here tonight. If you can hear us, got to be feeling real good. Browns 1-0 and after a season opener for the first time in 17 years. Yeah, hey, guys. Sorry it took me a moment here to get on. I was having some problems with the computer. I don't think it's used to the Browns winning the first yeah. week so it's we're having victory some technical mode. difficulties as i'm not going through the normal protocols to get to where i need to be but yeah hey we won one right gentlemen yeah is this I mean, real first life time and i mean god it took a queen dying and a lot of other things happening for us to get a first victory and we finally do it we do it against baker we do it in carolina uh we do something that, that really should be pretty pedestrian for most nfl teams but something that's pretty special for us so celebrate it enjoy it and hopefully this is something to build upon. You look at the first part of this uh, this schedule for us, and I'm sure you guys have gone over it. I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty pretty doable here for the mm-hmm. first few weeks. And, uh, you know, if we can run the ball, play a little bit of defense, get some timely turnovers, and then, like I keep talking about on my show, you know, the NFL is built for every team to go 8-8. Eight and eight. What was 8-8? Eight and eight? You know, 9-8 yeah. and eight or whatever now with 17 games. But – it's just built that way. So you've got to win games at the margin. So you go and you get a guy like Cade York, and all of a sudden you've got a team that has talent all across the field, right, mm-hmm. that I think can compete with anybody. It's certainly better than like a Carolina. But even with that, you still need to be able to compete at the margin. You've got to be able to do the little things. You've got to be able to make those field goals. And that's what Cade York, the difference was today. We played with them through – you know, the first four quarters and then got us to the point where we could win that ball game. And that's what we needed to do. And no matter who you're playing, you're going to have these kind of games. Even if you've got a a team that's way more talented than the other team, you're going to get games like this. And that's one of the ones that we, that we saw today. So all in all, Day to uh, day to celebrate, huh, gentlemen? I, I assume you guys are having some fun. Oh right? yeah, we're oh, totally. we're absolutely <laughs> having some fun. I mean, Kate York has been a, a fixture, a name on here that we've we've kind of talked about, but now we get to see why yeah. he was drafted in the fourth round. And I'm sure you know, Jay. I'm sure you were going through it, watching the game and watching that moment. Chris, I, I can only imagine like what that was like lead up to the kick, and once it kind of went through, there were so many videos of people just going going nuts, and a lot of people yeah. down in Carolina, a lot of people up here. Just uh, it's one of those one of those moments that, while it's only one and zero, can be a big boost for this team. I was at, my my fiance was taking a nap when he kicked it, so I had to do like the yes, give it a, <laughs> and I had to hold back. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I want to freak out right now, and I couldn't. It was driving me nuts a little bit. Oh, I you know I don't want to bring this up, but I hate to do this on the air, but you mentioned your fiance there, and you had to kind of hold back a little bit. You know, that, that's a conversation you may want to have before the wedding night, you know, of like, <laughs> hey, listen, I am a Browns fan. The Browns don't win all that often. So when they do, I, I, I may just kind of go nuts. And if that's going to be an issue, maybe this. Oh, she wouldn't get future. mad at me. I'm just just saying, <laughs> I, I don't want to cause point. any problems. If she woke up, she wouldn't be mad at me. But all I right. just try to be polite. I've seen the Browns break up many marriages. Some that I know more than others, and uh, I just don't want that to happen to you. You know, got to go in. I appreciate the the advice. You know, the things you got to worry about in relationships. It's always money, you know, sex, and then the Cleveland Browns. Those are the three big ones. So make sure that you've got all those set. 
I mean, that's that is one of the one of those th- <laughs> top three things you got to talk about. You know, die right now. He's <laughs> like, how do we get there? The Browns won. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at his face too. He's like, what do I say? <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> hey, I mean, I, I'll find a way to transition out of it. I don't really care. I mean, those. <laughs> I know that I had those conversations, you know, moving forward. So that's have to, right? You know, so otherwise you end up a sad divorced man. And boy, that's no way to live, let me tell you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Your only joy in life is when the Browns win a game at the beginning of the season and win the opener. But here we are, gentlemen. I mean, we're perfect. Enjoying the Browns it. are perfect right now. That's right. One and oh. Hey. We got the Browns in first place. We got the Guardians in first place. We got the Cavs making moves. It is a great day to be a Cleveland fan. It really is. It, like it, you feel the energy. Yeah. It's kind of just been growing over the last couple of weeks. I know the Guardians had their yeah. their rough spell, but you go five and one on a road trip, so you're feeling good there. But yeah. I mean, you know what the number one topic in this town is going to be, and it's the Browns going one and zero and finally winning an opener. Chris, did you see what did you see that you that you like kind of during the game that you think is sustainable for this team? We know the run game is going to be there, but maybe from Jacoby Brissett yeah. and things that, you know, you want to make sure that because we don't get a chance to talk throughout the week and transition day by day from high excitement to pre, uh, predicting and previewing next week. What are those things that they need to kind of wash away before they really become bad habits? Yeah, on the offensive side of the ball, I, I, I liked, obviously, the running game and when we needed it, it being there. Um, you know, Chubb, once again, it's just Chubb, you know, goes out there and just has a modest, what, 110 yards rushing or something. Just mm-hmm. I think it was 140. 100 yards, no problem. That's what he does. And Kareem Hunt just right there for backup. Uh, it's fabulous one, two. Jacoby Brissett, that's, that's concerning. He did make some key throws down the stretch, which is very, very important. And I'm not going to take anything away from him there, but you know, he's there to be a maintenance quarterback, you know, and uh, he played the maintenance role. He's going to make me nervous. Uh, you know, some of those throws, uh, if we lose that ball game, people are coming down hard on him today mm-hmm. and tomorrow and this week. Uh, but you know, we did win and he did make the throws, the clutch throws down the, down the stretch that helped us get there. So, but quarterback play wide receiver play, Anthony Schwartz was Anthony Schwartz. Once again, saw some drops out of him. Saw, you know, not, not, not an air show from the Cleveland Browns, but we didn't need it. Mm. And, um, so that's from the offensive side, defensive side, we got to figure out some of these, these blown coverages. I mean, my God. Uh, I'm not sure what Grant Delpit was doing on a couple of plays there. Uh, just completely blown in the secondary. Uh, positives on that side of the ball, Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett once again, and big surprise, right, gentlemen? Mm, yeah, uh, which, I heard he was all right. To me. You know, you have a guy like Baker who's putting out T-shirts and everything else, and he talks, and we knew it here in Cleveland. Even when he was here, he doesn't back it up. He really doesn't. And everybody nationally was talking about Baker being all jacked up, having this chip on his shoulder. It's like, hey, we know what happens most of the time when he's all jacked up. You don't know where that ball is going. He's bad decision making, and usually it's going high when he's throwing it. Whereas you got Miles Garrett, he gets jacked up for a game, and chances are he's going to perform. Now, we had that Halloween game where he was all dressed up and he didn't have a great game, but mm. he sure showed up in this game uh, in a big way, and that, that, was, that was great to see. Uh, hopefully... At, and he is sustainable. You know that he's going to be there right. all year. So that's going to be that's going to be the the offensive plan wrecker against teams all year long. And when you have somebody like that, that is going to disrupt an offensive game plan. That's that reverberates around the whole defense and is going to cover up some of the other problems we have in the secondary. Having said that, we need to get that fixed, gentlemen. <laughs> we yeah. need to get that fixed. Yeah. You cannot. I mean, Baker. Every play where where you say, "Wow, Baker played well there." It's like he's wide open. Come on. I, I mean, I, to say I could almost throw it, I can't throw it that far, so maybe no. But in terms of like on target, anybody could have made that. Um, so we we've just got to fix that in the secondary against better teams. They're going to carve us up. And I thought going into the season we had a good secondary, and hopefully this Ooh. is a schematic thing, and we can get these guys in the right positions so that. Those type of things do not happen. Who would have thought when going into this, we'd be questioning, like, you know, we need the secondary to tighten things up. But, man, that run defense really shut down Aaron McCaffrey or uh, Christian McCaffrey, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. the run Tommy defense Tobey was. Eye. 
Yeah. Tommy freaking yeah. Togiai shows up. I'm like, oh my God, I've been waiting for that guy. You know, not only has he got a great name, but of course the pedigree being Ohio State, mm -hmm. I've been rooting for this guy to be in, in a part of this line and really make an impact. And finally hearing his number get called a little bit on the interior, you saw some plays up front from those guys and getting into the backfield, not only from Miles Garrett, but along the front there too. Uh, so I felt pretty good about that. And of course, getting your paws all over the ball, you always have to say pause, right? Yeah. Whenever they throw the ball yeah. on the defensive line, Get those... it's always a paw. It's not a hand that hits the ball. It's always a paw. Get those you paws up, those, boys. <laughs> Get those paws up, you know? I... Always, always. So that was good. So there's a lot of positives to take out of this thing. But man, those negatives are, are going to keep us up at night, I think, boys. What's well, I was telling Kevin, the coach loves the negatives because he gets to humble them after a win a little bit. Like, all right, enjoy your win tonight. Yeah. And then when they go through film yeah. coverage, be like, all right, you think you're bad? You think you're great? Look at this. Look at this crap. And they just bring them right back down and humble them. That's how you got to love that as a coach. And I found Imagine it. Imagine what a guy like Belichick would do with that. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. my God. He'd have him thinking we got smoked. <laughs> just absolutely smoked. And I'm sure Kevin's going to use a lot of the same same tricks in the, in the room. But uh, nonetheless, bottom line, we did win, so. Yeah, and, and that's got to be get better. You got to improve, and that's what. That, hell, we got 17 weeks of this crap, so <laughs> they've got plenty of time to to work out some of these kinks and and uh, some of these schematic um, miscues. Well, and you got to keep it in perspective. Like the grand scheme of things is is you won. It, I yeah. I am questioning how these communication issues happen because it seems like these guys have been working together. You're plugging in a new guy in MJ Emerson, but I feel like it's. And this is just me, so it's, I'm probably wrong because these guys will forget more football as they're playing than I will probably ever know about the sport. But seems like it will be, be a little bit easier when you've already kind of built a culture and, and a, a certain mentality yeah. on the back end to bring in one guy. And then the communication issues happen with guys that have been working together. I, the, the positive here is I think guys take in the message of what we did wrong a lot easier when you go 1-0 we see some of these things kind of, yeah, I guess they, they show up multiple weeks in a row because you lose that opener and then, you know, things start to spiral away from you. You win it, going 1-0 and to start an NFL season. Chris, you've seen it, how important that can be for a locker room. It's just this weird energy you can't even explain. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what also feels good is not only being 1-0, and but then the next team on your schedule is the Jets. Yeah. I, and, I Joe, like and Joe too. Flacco. And Joe Flacco. So we've got a little bit of a collegiate feel to our uh, to our schedule mm -hmm. where it's a little soft here. We're playing Arkansas States of the world. Which heads off to Ohio State with that Mac tough schools. matchup they had this weekend. <laughs> right. And some Mac schools here to start it all off. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's nice. That's nice to be able to ease into a season where you don't have your starting quarterback. You've got some new faces on this team. And, uh, and a team that, that really needs to find some success. They really need to find some success now that Baker's gone because they need to prove a few things. And I'll tell you, one, one more note on the Baker thing. I, I'm kind of proud of our fan base here in that, you know, nationally, you know, and there's been a lot of talk about Baker here locally, but nationally, of course, that was the mm -hmm. number one story. But one of the things that everybody kept talking about in the offseason more than anything was Cade York. I mean, how many times do we talk about Cade York? And like, hey, this is going to be a big deal. Like, people nationally are going, why the hell did you draft a kicker? We're going, that's, that's a big deal. You know, we got our Phil Dawson, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody been talking about it. And sure enough, the first game, we see it show up. I mean, that, that was the, d the decider in this game. That's what changed the whole thing. And uh, it wasn't – it was Baker, but it wasn't really Baker. It was Cade York at the end. And so – you know, our fans being in tune and the type of football fans they are, we, not much gets by us. And we were able to identify what was going to be the difference in this game. And I think a lot of games going forward with Cade York, it's it's nice to have that confidence when you're moving the ball to know that, you know, if you don't put six on the board, seven on the board, you've got a kicker that can probably put it in for you for three. So, I mean, this is like a hell of a week for you. I mean, you got Ohio State wins. We sweep right? the Twins. Browns win the I opener. Big play gets Bernie and Hanford Dixon on a show. I mean, like, come on, anything getting better? Can we can we get better yeah. than this? No doubt. No doubt. And Bernie himself is going on. You know, I saw him on Friday night doing the high school circuit, mm -hmm. promoting the, the the podcast. I saw him on Saturday doing promoting. I saw him out there again today. 
he's really jacked up about it. We're really jacked up about it. That's going to be a big deal. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's so great for it to coincide with the Browns seemingly being on track a little bit now, um, and everything else going on well in Cleveland, um, gives him a nice platform to, to get his message out there. And, and for us throughout the season, boy, I'm just, I'm just giddy to be able to listen to Bernie's perspective yes. as this thing rolls out, you know, the way the season goes, you're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs, you're going to have your times where it's just like, okay, we've heard the same thing over and over again. And you know, Bernie Kosar is going to come in there with some kind of a different look at things or something that you're just not seeing because he's got that, that, that experience. He's been in the huddles. He's been in the games. He's won a Super Bowl. Um, he's got that guy so hand I, I with him too. That. He knows a couple things about football too. And, and absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, the guy who founded the dog pound mm-hmm. not only understands football, but understands his fan base. And it's great to have the two of them together. Hey, and I actually, I miss having Bernie on the preseason games because he would call plays and yeah. tell you exactly how they were going to go before. He was the Romo, happened. Tony Romo before Tony Romo. You're exactly right. You're, and when people start saying that about Romo, I'm like, oh, they don't even know. Yeah, they, they, they were never around when you had Bernie Kosar doing the pregame, and he would call every play, tell him exactly what was going to happen and exactly how it was going to turn out. And that was that was just so great. Mm-hmm. I miss him on there, but now selfishly, we got him on our air. Yeah, yeah. Before you start talking about Romo, go back to those games going for the barge against the Detroit Lions before the season even started. Just so <laughs> you know, when we all get to go to work, we'll be like, just so you know. I pretty much work with Bernie Kosar. We all get to say that now. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's a great thing to great thing to put out there. I know Jay, you've been using that a lot. Yeah. Right? Within the first week of this this coming out, and Chris, I know that uh, you guys are going to be continuing the celebration tomorrow night. What can we expect tomorrow night on the Reflog Show Mondays at nine? Yeah, so uh, we've got the Bernie Kosar show is going to be out tomorrow night as well, and then we're going to have our show. Um, we have got Hayden Grove is, is scheduled to appear. We're also out to a guy by the name of Kate York. We'll see if that ends up coming to fruition. Uh, the hero of today's ball game, he's friend of show, and we're trying to get him back on to kind of tell us a little bit about that kick and about the experience of going down to Carolina and kicking some butt. So we're going to have fun tomorrow evening. See you guys about nine o'clock for our show. And then uh, we'll release Bernie's show at eight o'clock or perhaps later. I mean, if you want to plug away, happen, please I know that we're going to be at nine. Plug your show away. How everyone can find you guys and stuff. Yeah. The best, best spot to look for us is on my Twitter handle. Go at reflog underscore 18. It'll be pinned to the top there, or you can go to at big dot com or what is our handle at big play show, something along those lines. I don't know. You can find it on my handle <laughs> yeah. over there. Yeah. You'll see it there. Yeah, and if you guys do get Cade York on, if you guys want to drop a line to him about uh, if he ever wants to come on Voice of Land too, I, I've been a big admirer of Cade York myself. When first He's time the he soccer used, guy, first time he used the word soccer in his in his history, like that was I was hooked from that point. Like that, that'll. So, there you go. Kevin's <laughs> the play by play guy for uh, the Cleveland the cr- Crunch. The Cleveland Crunch now. Yeah. So. Very nice. Yeah, Very so nice. soccer's had a had a big influence on my life. So if someone says they were connected with the sport in some way, then you you've, you've already got me. And you play for Cleveland, you got me. Cleveland and soccer, those two words. That's all I need right there. Cleveland Crunch, Cleveland Force, fantastic back in the day. I I will never forget going down to the Cleveland Coliseum or to the Richfield Coliseum, which is right down the road from me. I grew up in Bath, went to Revere my freshman year. Um, but in any case, it was right down the road. I'd go to a lot of those games and it was just so much fun. There was some great energy around those teams too. Um, I'll tell you the fans really got into it and me as a kid, I just enjoyed the heck out of that stuff. So I have a mad respect for that soccer. And they always put, they always make a great family atmosphere there. And now that they're, now that they're back, they're trying to build it and some games coming to the IX center. So a little bit more space for this reincarnation of this, of the team too. So hopefully getting back to some of those memories but uh chris thank you so much for taking some time with us to enjoy this victory sunday night enjoy the rest of your victory sunday and your victory monday chris thank you so much for coming on the show here tonight thanks guys go browns go, go browns, browns. And that is chris mcneil at reflog underscore 18 on twitter and you can catch the big play reflog show tomorrow night at nine and of course uh, bernie and hanford dixon the Bernie Kosar show with Hanford Dixon now on the big play network. You can also, I know that the audio will be out there just like ours is all the time, but the show uh, seeming to be aired at 8 PM. So a big Browns night to be right here with the big play network at big play at big play two, one, six. 
all across social media. Make sure you guys tune in. Get that insight from the great Bernie Kosar well, and top dog, Hanford Dixon. Kevin, can we break last week's record for the shortest segment ever next? I, I hope so, but Sound, I don't want to disrespect I'm, the Gardos that way. All right. Don't want to disrespect the guards, but we will be right back. We got to celebrate. It's a victory Sunday night. The Browns are 1-0. The guards are still sweep. at the top of the AL Center after a sweep of the Twins. We'll talk about that next, enjoying this victory Sunday night right here on The Voice of Land on the Big Play Network. Are you looking for a career in manufacturing? Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has partnered with some of the biggest and the best companies throughout Northeastern Ohio. The recruiters at Vector Technical will coach you through the entire job process and will help you land an opportunity that you are truly excited about. Vector does not add any additional fees and offers benefits as well as free online skills training through Penn Foster. To learn more, visit www.vectortechnicalinc.com and make sure to check out our job board to see a full list of our current opportunities and apply. Welcome back one final time on this Victory Sunday night. Your Browns post-game show on the Big Play Network is the voice of land. Kevin Arnold, always positive. Jay, Peter, tell up. And we got to celebrate the, the Guardians being also still at the top of the L Central. Most people will probably only focus on the Browns, and rightfully so. Cade York is our savior from the gods with the, the foot of gold. After one week, overreaction Sunday night, overreaction Monday. Sure, maybe, but we're allowed to. We're yeah, after a, not winning an opener as many years in a row. Yeah, we're allowed to go nuts and normally give like one day. No, I'm giving us two. Okay. I'm giving us two. <laughs> Don't worry. By the time I get to work tomorrow, I feel like I've only had like 12 hours for it because nice. gotta gotta get to gotta hit that grind. You know, back to work tomorrow. But at least you'll feel that victory money Monday energy anywhere that you are. And you should feel it from your baseball team, too. Well, again, while other people may not talk about it, we are still going to talk baseball. Guardians, again, we've talked about throughout the season how difficult a baseball season really is. We said last week, we, oh, we're really down in the dumps. We don't feel good. We're, we're losing our lead. All of a sudden, you go 5-1 and one on a road trip. Stephen Kwan doing Stephen Kwan type things. Defensively, Will Benson. I don't know if you guys saw that catch. I was so mad at Sports Center for not putting that on the top ten. Was it not on the top ten? I was livid. I was like, you gotta be joking me, dude. You gotta be joking. Like that wasn't just a run, hit the wall, jump up in the air. No, he leaped into the wall and caught that and they didn't put I was like, ah Kevin. I won't even there's probably like six soccer plays that I was like, and I can't I think not taking away from soccer plays, but None of them were on that I'm, level. And then there's like, none of them were on that level. I couldn't believe it. I mean, you know I'm here for, and I'll retweet them. I'll quote tweet them all the time. I'm here for a really good soccer highlight. But when a guy robs a home run, I don't care how tall he is. He's not, uh, he, you know, not, he's still learning the outfield position. And he's been transitioned between left and right and center. So he's learning all of these different angles and everything. When a guy like that, as a rookie is robbing a home run in a crucial division matchup. It's They don't like Cleveland, dude. Ah, dude. That's what it is. They just don't See? like Cleveland, dude. I'm just, all right. They don't do that. And then I don't, I'm not trying to get into this Baker talk, but if you listen to the media all week, it was so sympathetic over Baker. But when he was here, it was just, he sucks. He's garbage. They need to get rid of him. As soon as we get rid of him, he's out of Cleveland. They're like, this guy's going to bounce back and have the greatest season ever. Like, I'm so sick of national media. Oh, my God. They're so against us. You know, I was once when I think I'm out there, they reel me right back <laughs> in. Oh, you go against Cleveland? Oh, Kevin and Seven will be there. <laughs> I don't know why I just talked in the third person. But Guardians do get the do sweep the twins, and they're in third place, four and a half back. The team that's really that's kind of found a groove has been the White Sox, who are two games back. Looking ahead, the schedule. We need Larusso to come back for them because yeah, I think he was holding them back yeah, big time. Yeah, I don't, like again, we kind of we said we don't like to wish ill will on anybody, and he is dealing with. I a, mean, oh, I know. I want him yeah. to get healthy, but I do want him just back. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know what the the disconnects between Larusso, who is who's shown he's been a great baseball manager. And I, one the game just passed him by, I believe. I think so. I th- was he out too long? Like, was is it is it just so new age? I mean, it doesn't 
people still talk about how baseball needs to change for the new era of of athletes, and it's still kind of catering to the the baseball homer, the baseball purist out there. I, I don't know. I, I I just don't think he can connect with the young players. No, he. I mean, dude, he was falling asleep in the dugout. Like that's not good. For yeah. Look. I feel like part of that was probably the illness, so we, we pray for that. We do. I didn't even know what was wrong with him, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I just know that he had to step away because of dealing with some health problems. That's all that's been said. Wish you best health. Just get back to your team and get him back to losing, please. <laughs> well, I think the Guardians just need to take care of take care of that. Now, we start a home series with the L.A. Angels. Now, they're, kind of, they're basically out of it, but that's kind of a dangerous team at the end of a season. Yeah, because, I mean, you get Shohei, who could be an MVP, and no. Mike Trout can hit a home run at any given moment. But that team, like, there's a funny joke on ESPN and RBS. They're like, and, uh, Shohei Itani strikes out 12 in eight innings. Yeah. Mike Trout hits three home runs. And Angels lost. lose five to four. And you're like. I mean, and that literally happened to them. All the time. Year. It was them all the time. Well, I don't know who they were facing, but you remember the eight to seven yeah. loss that they took, and there were they had seven uh, solo home runs. <laughs> they had seven home runs in a game. Peter, this is like it was mind boggling. Like, I feel bad for Angels fans, dude. Like I, I feel bad for them. I feel bad for for Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. Like these are these are guys that should be marketable, and yet. You can know all you need to know about baseball when you know that someone doesn't know who Mike Trout is when they see him in a batting cage with his dad. Like, Mike Trout is supposed to be the face of this league. Yeah, and- dude, the Guardians are actually, for locally, they really get their word out on their players. Like, they do. They, they do. Like everyone job loves, uh, who's the, the younger outfielder, SpongeBob? Oscar Gonzalez. Oscar Gonzalez. Hell of a pl- season for his Oscar rookies. Square Pants. Yeah, he's got the SpongeBob thing going. Like oh, dude, everyone great. knows Laquan. It's- like all these, like I, everyone in Cleveland knows all these players. They do a great job marketing locally. MLB needs to do a great, better job marketing globally, nationally for all the players. Well, you know the other reason why people locally know the Guardians players, right? Because we love our baseball. Because we love prospects. This organization loves prospects. <laughs> and we hear about prospects forever. And then when they get up to the team, we've heard their name so, for so long, we recognize the name. Yeah. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be the guy to turn it around. This is well, gonna- one thing I do love about the team is just how excited they are for each other. Because yeah. you were talking about you know, the, that catch last night. And, and on the, the broadcast, they showed that thing, like, it seemed like 50 mm. times. You know? Yeah. Because they were just like, they were, they were so impressed with that catch. And then, but Quan's reaction to I, it I, yeah. was just, I mean, he was just, like, so thrilled. It was, uh, that was cool. Quan is a very energetic player, man. He, he gets pumped. These guys are young, and they up. are, they, yeah, they're exciting to watch. They, they don't know any I better. Can. And, and the, like, you, you talked about it. They are prospects. They've played together for a little while. Even if they get traded in, they've played at other levels. So now they're bringing the minor league system up to the big leagues like we've had 14 or 15 players make their major league debut this year and you are two games ahead in your division in september as we uh, approach mid-september i just say one thing before we uh get off here yeah so we got these young guys coming up playing great yes they are Hmm? but there was a guy that i heard everyone saying they they should probably get rid of him he's on the downfall of his career get get him while he's peaked is Shane Bieber. He has not peaked. He has so many great years ahead of him. He just dropped below a three uh, below three ERA. Like, put some respect on this dude's name. He's a Cy Young winner, and when you get to the postseason, you're going to appreciate having him on your team. And when you got to face your division 19, 20 times a year, the all the metrics, all the analytics are going to help guys go against some of these top-tier pitchers. Shane Bieber still shows you night in and night out even if he's having his a not like an off night or not a great night, he still battles through six innings. Dude, and he's I, still a Cy Young candidate pitcher. And I'm sorry to bring up a trigger word here in Cleveland with battle, like battle through. Like <laughs> that's what Hugh Jackson always used to say. Our guys really battled today. We didn't win. Really battled. And we gotta look at the film. But Shane Bieber, like, that's a guy, that's that's why he's the number one in your rotation. And then other people have been – other pitchers like Tristan McKenzie have de- been developed the same way. Even when you don't have your best, can you get us through six innings? Can you give the team a chance? If you give us a chance, we are going to do all we can on our end to win it. We've seen the offense sputter at times, and they haven't done that. It's 162 games. It happens to every single team. But this team – like, 
fun, 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 fun. F is for friends that do stuff together. Like I'll go with the whole SpongeBob theme and make this make this really fun. Like, it, I for I, a second there I was like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, I, I know. SpongeBob. I was like, "You don't know." What are you talking about over there, dude? Yeah, and you don't know like the the fun song from SpongeBob. No. Well, Oscar Gonzalez would get it. So, I know. He that's would. what makes them fun. Yes. Oh, uh, because Oscar Gonzalez and this whole team would get it, and they all love that he's that he's there. And then the kids that are out of the games, they're having a great time with it. I, the, even if they lose a couple games here or there, don't freak out. Like they are going to be kind of even keel the rest of the way. They're going to be in this. Can they get there? Can they finish the job? The Browns finished the job today. Their mantra: start to finish. The Guardians have kind of built and grown from the start. Can this young team really take those steps to be a year or two ahead and finish? We think so, but it's going to be fun to watch no matter what way it goes. Yeah. I mean, I can't wait to see how this season ends. I, like, I just, just keep that. I know the Browns have started. We're in full football mode now. There's football on Thursday and Friday. And I mean, we're Saturday. about to get into a trifecta here. The Cavs are going to start up, and they're going to be long and excited. The Indians are going to be into the playoffs and the end of the season baseball. And the Browns, he's like, oh, my God, does it feel good to be a Cleveland sports fan? I know we are the Browns. And it's all the guys. Bring me the content. Bring the content to <laughs> us, please. Maybe let it happen closer to Sunday yes. for the other teams. We need all news drops on Saturday nights or yeah, Sunday like, mornings. Like you make a trade on Wednesday or Thursday. Now everybody's talked about it ad nauseum. Now we come on Sunday night. People hear, oh, Donovan Mitchell was straight to the Cavs. Oh, I've heard this before. Click off. We are a fun show. Just like the Guardians are a fun team and the Cavs are going to be a fun team. The Browns gave you a fun opening day. Stay with the voice of the land. We are a fun show, and we are the Browns post game show on the Big Play Network. And it's time to sign off. As fun as this has been, every week we go. We're gonna get off at eight. We got stuff to do. We're gonna try to cut it at eight, and we never do because we have fun. <laughs> we just we just have a whole lot of fun, and we're gonna keep doing it for as long as we can. And for anybody that tunes in, whether live, replay, audio, however it may be. We can't thank you all enough, but for this edition, this Victory Sunday edition of The Voice of Land, your Browns postgame show on the Big Play Network. That about wraps it up for Always Positive. Jay, who's going to be celebrating Victory Monday all day long, he's going to be barking all day long. Pretty much. Our producer extraordinaire, Peter Telp, he's going to be barking all day long. People at his job are probably going to be annoyed with him for barking so much, but they shouldn't be because they should be Browns fans, too. I am Kevin Arnold reminding all of you, don't let anyone ever tell you it's just a game. Live it. Live it up. Live up the wins. We truly love you all, 3,000. And as our great late friend Mike Allen always used to say, all gas, no breaks. Plus, don't talk about it. Be about it. And this, Browns were about it tonight. The Guardians were about it the last six Cade games York on the road. Cade York about it. Cleveland on fire. Cade York he is the savior. Please, Reflog Show, help us get Cade York if you get him too, because I, I, I got to talk <laughs> to Cade. It's tough when we're the post game show to get him to come on afterwards. He was in the office this week, and I didn't even get a chance <laughs> to talk to him. <laughs> I need to talk to Cade York. Somebody help me, please. But until that point, this has been the voice of the land. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great night and a great week. Here we go, go brownies. brownies. Here we go. Hoo, hoo.